हेलो एवरीवन माई सेल्फ एम ए महंत वर्किंग इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन वालचिन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग द टॉपिक क्लाइंट सर्वर बाइंडिंग इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड सिस्टम लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द क्लाइंट सर्वर बाइंडिंग इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड सिस्टम्स एंड डिस्क्राइब द कंसेप्ट ऑफ बाइंडिंग एजेंट इन क्लाइंट सर्वर बाइंडिंग client server binding a client becoming associated with a server is known as client server binding server binding handles are used both by the clients and the servers in the course of the binding process in some cases servers needs binding information for clients that call them a binding handle that refers to such binding information is called a client binding handle actually client server connectivity is due to the client server binding so there will be interconnection between the client and server is due to this client server binding it involves several issues server naming server locating binding time changing bindings multiple simultaneous bindings so client can send the request to the server and server will be performing the operation and sending the result to the client in the form of response so this will happening due to this client server binding it is necessary for a client to know the location of a server before a remote procedure call can take place between them the process by which a client becomes associated with a server so that calls can take place is known as binding so the binding is nothing but the interconnection between the client and the server the client server view of rpc programming describe the distributed resource model implemented by the rpc mechanism in this view programming tasks are divided between servers which provide services or make resources available to remote clients and clients which seek and make use of these services or resources client server binding issues the client server binding process involve proper handling of several issues so these issues are described below how does a client specify a server to which it wants to get bound so how the client will be connected to the server or get bounds how does the binding process locate the specified server so there are number of servers are available so in this issue we have to get the binding process for locating a specific server when it when it is properly bind a client to a server means how the client will be connected with the server means it how the binding procedure can take place between client and server it is is it possible for a client to change a binding during execution so during the execution is it possible the binding of client with the server this is one of the issue can a client be simultaneously bound to multiple servers that provide the same service so here client can be connected with the multiple servers so this is one of the issue in client server binding server naming use of interface names it has two parts a type and instance a type specifies the interface it's itself instance specifies a server providing the services within that interface the central component of the client server model is the interface an interface is a set of remotely callable operation offered by a server and invoke invocable by clients for example an interface of type file server and there may be several instances of it providing file service server locating the interface name of the server is its unique identifier when the client specifies the name of rpc the server must be located before the client's request message can be sent to it the two common methods are broadcasting and binding agent broadcasting broadcasting means the one to many means one is the server and many are the clients so 
client broadcast a request message to locate the desired server. The node on which the desired server is located returns a response message. If the desired server is replicated on several nodes, then the first response is given to the client node and rest are discarded. Easy to implement on small networks. Binding agent. Binding agent is the name of a server used to bind a client to the server by providing client the information of location of desired server. Binding agent maintains a binding table which maps its server interface name to its location. All servers register themselves to this binding agent by giving its interface name and a handle used to locate it. A server can also deregister itself when it is no longer prepared to give service. Deregistering can be done automatically by binding agent itself. It can pull servers periodically and deregister the servers that fail to respond. To locate a server, client contacts the binding agent. If the server is re registered, then binding agent returns its handle to the client. Then client uh, can directly interact with the server for the service. Binding agent location is known to all the nodes. A fixed address is used for the binding agent. This is the diagram of the binding agent mechanism for locating the server in case of remote procedure call. So here there are three parameters. One is binding agent, one is server process, and one is client process. In first, there are four steps. In first step, the server registers itself with the binding agent. In second step, the client requests the binding agent for the server's location. In third step, the binding agent returns the server's location information to the client. In fourth step, the client calls the server. In this way, the, there will be a, a connection can be set up between client process and server process. Advantages of binding agent. This method can support multiple servers having the same interface type so that any of the available servers may be used to provide the service. When multiple servers provide same service, the clients can be spread equally to achieve the load balance. Servers can specify list of users who may use its service. Binding agent binds only those clients who are authorized to use the services. Disadvantages of the binding agent. Overhead involved in the binding clients to server is, is large. A binding agent should be robust against failures and, sh and should not be a performance bottleneck. Think and write. Pause the video and write the answer. The client request the dash for the server's location. Option A, binding agent. Option B, binding server. Option C, binding client. Option D, none of these. You have to choose any one option among these four options. So the correct answer is binding agent. The client requests the binding agent for the server's location. Binding time. A client may be bound to a server at compile time, at link time, or at call time. Binding at compile time. Client and server modules are progr programmed as if they were intended to be linked together. Server's network address can be compiled into the client code by the programmer. Disadvantage. In inflexible, if server relocates or re uh, the server is replicated or the interface changes. Binding at link time. The binding agent binds client to server by returning server's handle. The server's handle is cached by the client to avoid contacting the binding agent. Suitable when client calls the server several times once it is bound to it. Binding at call time. A client is bound to server at the time when it calls the server for the first time during its execution. It uses indirect call method. This is the figure of illustrating binding at call time by the method of indirect call. It will be having three parameters, binding agent, server process, and client process. This will be having the five steps. In first step, the client process passes the server's interface name and the arguments of RPC 
call to the binding agent. The binding agent sends the an RPC message to the server, including in the arguments received from the client. In the third step, the server returns the result of request process to the binding agent. In the fourth step, the binding agent returns the, this result to the client along with the server's handle. In fifth step, subsequent calls are sent directly from the client process to the server process. So here, once the connection is established between the client and server, number, number of uh, messages can be transferred between client process and server process. Change bindings. Binding can be changed dynamically from reliability point of view. The client or server may wish to change binding at some instance of time. For example, a client willing to get a request serviced by any one of the multiple servers may be programmed to change a binding to another server of the same type when a call to already connected server fails. The server of the binding may want to alter the binding and the connect client to another server when the new version of server is installed. When server has to be replaced with the new one, it must be done when no files are open or state of open file must be transferred to new one. Multiple simultaneous binding. A client can be bounded to multiple servers. For example, when a client wishes to update multiple copies of a file at file server that is replicated at the several nodes. So this is about the multiple simultaneous binding between the client and the server. These are the references. Thank you.